Okay, it's time for more crap from the amplifier adventure. I say crap in a good way. So, let me just tell you what's been going on since the last video. Well, to start off with, I've made a few modifications to the um, tone control. Just get it over here. See, there's a big mess of wires and I've added a volume control to it now. And you can also see, you might be able to make out that there's a little preamp there because the output of this thing is just so low that it really needs a boost. So I put in a little preamp. Let's just get a close up of that. Okay, the camera's light is really messing up the autofocus. There we go. See a couple of transistors in there. I made a few modifications to the amplifier itself. Now, I wasn't all that happy with the sensitivity of this thing, so I changed the two BC548 transistors here and here to... Um, actually, I can't remember what I changed them to now. I know I changed them to something that's much more sensitive. I think they're 2N... I think they're 2N3955s. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know they're the same transistors I used in the preamp. Let me just have a little look at those. Ah, 2N3904. I knew it was something like that. So this thing is a lot more sensitive. And I also found out that I could have used uh, those one mega ohm potentiometers after all. It's just that this one here is a bit faulty. But I've put it in back to front and it seems to be working just fine. So it's very true to the original design. Now, if we go up, you can see how the output is wired. I decided to use the um, resistors and connect the capacitors on the end of the resistors after all because it just seems to work better that way and at the back here I have made a power supply so let's just have a look at that this is the power supply it consists of a transformer a diode and some capacitors and a couple of relay solenoids I'll just give you a quick talk through of how that works but the main transformer here obviously to convert the voltage so it's a much more safer voltage and this diode converts it from AC to DC. From there it goes into this capacitor here, which is 3300 microfarads to get smoothed out. And then it's split up three ways. Some of it goes into this solenoid coil here. Some of it goes into this solenoid coil. And at the back there, there's a resistor, which it also goes into, which you can't really see. And from there, it comes out of the coils and the resistors, goes into this capacitor, this capacitor, and this capacitor, where it gets smoothed even more. So it's a completely ripple-free three-way power supply. Even though it's not regulated or stabilized in any way. So this power supply supplies about 19 volts to each of the parts. So without further ado, I'm going to power this up and test it. So that's now powered up and I've got this meter connected up to one of the amplifiers. I've only got it connected up to one because the other one's going to be pulling the same amount of power anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Now I'm going to play a tape and I'm sure you'll recognize this when it starts playing. adjustments to the power supply because it's kind of struggling to give it the amount of amps that it needs. Let's just spin the tape on a bit and I can show you how good the stereo works. Right, okay. I'm now going to put the microphone up to the speakers so you can hear it. I'm actually going to turn this down a bit because it's going to overdrive the microphone. So 
so that seems to be working pretty good. And if you're wondering what the song was, it was um, something from Jazz Jack Rabbit. Any of you guys ever played that game? Pretty good game. I'm going to do a review of that on my next 8 bit guy video. But anyway, yeah. Going to wire up the. Um, Going to wire up the tone control now and see what that does. Okay, friends and fans, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. I have all three parts connected together now. I've tested them separately. I've tested the power supply, the tone control, well, tone and volume control, and the amplifier. And all three of these circuits work. So now, this is going to be powered up for the first time. I'm going to connect the power. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's not making any weird noises. Nothing appears to be smoking or anything like that, so that seems to be good. So, I'm going to play a tape and see what happens. What do you know? It seems to be working. See if the volume control works. Yep. I'll just hold the microphone up to the speakers. I don't want this too loud, you see, because it's a bit late. I'll hold it up to this speaker and you can see what I'm doing. I'm happy with this. And everybody, this is a first time power up. I haven't tested this. I did not test this before I made the video. I doubted that this thing would even work, but as you can hear, it seems to be working good. Now, the only things that are remaining is to put a heat sink on the output transistors here. They're not even warm, but that's one of the things that definitely does need to be done. So anyway, what I think I'll do next, make an enclosure for these parts, get a couple of heat sinks for the main transistors, then put in the selector switch and the input and output jacks, and I'll have a nice little amplifier. And that's it for now. That's what I'll be doing in the next video. So until next time, goodbye. And it's a completely ripple-free power supply, even though there is no the word modification? No, that's not it. Ripplefication? No, that's not even a word. Um, you know, regulation, that's one of them. And it's a completely ripple free power supply, even though there's no kind of regulating. Um, of course, we cannot see the meter, let me just. Um, Oh, hang on a minute. Got my wires all messed up here. Right. Oh, and my computer's just come on. Delays, delays. Just because something touched the keyboard, the computer decided to turn itself on.